Hello and welcome to the second video in this tutorial series on making a Minecraft style game in Unity. Uh, if you didn't watch the first video, there's a lot of stuff that's, that you'd need to know to understand what's going on in this video. So I'd recommend you go back and watch that because it was quite long and a bit dry and I'm not going to go over the stuff again in this unless I absolutely have to. Hopefully this video will be a bit quicker and not quite as drawn out. So uh, with that in mind, we'll get straight to it. So... Um, we're creating our chunk, our um, voxel in the last one. In this one, we're going to create a chunk, which is essentially just a collection of voxels together. Uh, so if we go into our... Um, actually, if I just stop that running first. If we go into our chunk script that we created last time, this code here is what is responsible for putting the voxel information into our, um, our data lists here. So we're going to break this out into its own function. Now, if you remember, we're actually this. All this is doing is adding the data to the list, so it's not technically creating a voxel. So, what we're going to call the function is add voxel data to chunk. Uh, and you'll see we've got these errors straight away, and that's because we've declared these in the start menu, which means they're only accessible in the start menu. Now, we're going to need to be able to access these from a number of different functions, so we're going to just declare them up top. So it's uh, accessible to anything in this class. Uh, and we're going to put this, just doesn't really need to be, but we're going to put this in its own function as well. And we'll call this one create mesh. <coughs> and then in here, we can just call add voxel data to chunk and create mesh. And that should make absolutely no difference to what's going on in here. Yep. So the first thing we need to do is right now this uh, create, uh, not create, sorry, this add voxel is adding the voxel data at an absolute position. If we go back to our voxel data class, these positions here means because of the way we're calling it, we're calling these positions as they are. These should be treated as offsets. Uh, right now, it's always going to place, no matter where our chunk is, it's always going to place the voxel at not, 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 one, not, not, one, one, not, um, relative to the chunk, that is. So that means that we would only ever have one voxel drawn, or rather, we could have a dozens of voxels drawn, but they'd all be in the same place. So we need to put, what we need to do is treat these as offsets rather than positions. So if we um, go in here, uh, and we're going to make this one, uh, our add voxel to chunk mesh, we're going to make it take in a vector 3, which we'll just call pause. And then when we position our vox, our vertices, it's going to be vertice, it's going to be uh, the voxel offset that we got from our voxel data class here, plus the position that we pass in. So for this, for just for testing's sake, if I put that as transform dot position, then it's going to draw the voxel at the position of the chunk, which it would do anyway. Um, it's so, so really, it shouldn't make any difference whatsoever. Yeah, no, it's slightly off to the side. Is that because? All oh, right, because it's not centered. So yeah, that that doesn't make any difference whatsoever in and of itself. But uh, we could just put plus transform dot forward uh, no uh, transform dot right and that should put it one block further over to the side than where it was before uh, so basically what we've done now is we've made it so that we can pass any location value here and it will draw the voxel uh, or it will add the data to correspond to that exact position so of course we need to draw more than one voxel so the way we're going to get around that is we're going to use some for loops um, before we do the for loops, we need to know how many voxels we want to draw. And we're going to put that in here because this is another value that needs to never change once the game is started. You can change the value. You can play with the uh, the values yourself and you know decide how big you want these chunks and all that kind of thing. But once the game is running and once it's started generating terrain, this value needs to stay the same. So we're going to leave it in here. And also, it's useful to be able to get to it from uh, from wherever you are. Uh, it's just an int, and we're going to call it chunk width. 
and for now we're just going to set it as five you can't access a static array a static value from in the inspector so you are going to have to set it in here like this i mean there will be ways of doing it but there's no point in going to, into it for this and i'll just copy that and then this one we're going to call chunk height because the chunk height is it's not quite i mean you can do the game as cute you can treat the chunks as cubes um and just layer them on top of each other most of the time these sort of games don't do that or if they do it's only one or two high and they have taller chunks than they are wide um but we'll get into that later so now we've got these values we're going to do a for loop in here uh, I'm gonna, st I'm gonna treat. We're going through the x, y, and z. I'm gonna treat my x, my y axes as the outer loop, which basically means that it's kind of like it's drawing the bottom square of a chunk, and then the next square up, and the next square up, and it's kind of layering it up from the bottom up. This is entirely sort of a personal preference thing. There are some cases where it's useful to have it this way around, but really it's a matter of preference you could do x y z you could do y z x you could do what i'm doing is uh y x z uh so y equals naught y is less than voxel data dot chunk height y plus plus and then we're just going to copy this just for the sake of um ease and then we need this one to be x this one to be z and then change all the other ones and obviously uh no sorry and then obviously this is width not height and z is also width because the chunks will be square across but obviously taller when you break into the third dimension and then if we pull out that call to that function to the add to voxel function and we pass it a new vector 3 created with the xyz value that we've just made using this for loop and then we go back into here we should have a 5 by 5 cube of voxels there we go so that's great um in theory that's a chunk but uh, we're not done yet so as I stated in the last video, the reason that we're doing going to all this trouble to create, uh, to draw our own cubes um, is because of efficiency. So we could just use Unity's built-in cube prefab like this. Uh, it, this is um, the same size as the uh, cubes. That, sorry, it's, uh, it's offset. Uh, this is the same size as the cubes, as the voxels that we're drawing. Um, so, I mean, it's perfectly... It would work fine in t like visually, but the problem is that it's got all this stuff attached to it. It's got box colliders, it's got its own filter, its own renderer, its own transform. Whereas our 5x5 five five, uh, chunk here has just got one of each of these to represent all of those, all of those voxels, all of those cubes. Obviously, that's a lot more efficient. I mean, I'm not entirely sure... I'm not 100% sure, but I, th I think this, because there's no, well, definitely because there's no box collider on it, this 5x5 five five lump of cubes right now will be more efficient, less system intensive, less expensive in terms of CPU and memory than this one cube. And if it isn't, then it's not far off. Um, and the reason I'm bringing that up now is because if we zoom in here, you can see that we're drawing all the inside faces of our cubes and we don't need to draw those faces because we can't see those faces. The player isn't going to be able to look inside here. Like he'll be able to dig, or she, sorry. Um, he or she will be able to dig inside of this cube, and then they'll be able to see those faces. But from the outside, we do not need to be drawing those faces. So um, right now, even though it's more efficient than drawing a single cube over and over, it is actually still quite inefficient. What we need to do is we need to make it so that we're not drawing those faces unless they're actually visible, and which would be open to the air. If they're adjacent to another cube, we don't need to draw that face. So the way we're going to go about this is we're going to create another lookup, array, uh, lookup table in our voxel data. Again, static read-only. Uh, this one is vector 3, one-dimensional array. And we're going to call this one face checks. Um, and what this is going to do is... Uh, and so I'll just finish up initializing it first. Uh, it's going to be six of these, one for each face in the cube. 
And what this is going to do is this is going to represent a bunch of offsets in the same order that we check the faces. So this is the order that we check the faces. We loop through this array, this number here. We loop through each one, and then we draw the face for that. For that, uh, we draw the triangles for that face um, in order of back, front, top, bottom, left, right. So we're going to loop through in the same order for this, and for each face, we're going to have an offset value which represents the voxel adjacent to it. So for the back face, for example, X would be zero because you know we're looking behind it, so we're not moving left or right. Y would be zero because we're not moving up or down. Z would be minus one because we're looking behind it. So it would be whatever voxel we're currently checking plus this offset, which is Z minus one. So we're checking behind it. For To look in front of it, it would be Z plus one. To look above it, it would be Y plus one and so on. So uh, I'll just copy this. Save my poor fingers from uh, more arthritis than they're already going to get. We need six of these, and in the same order of these, so that we can share the index, to check the back face is Z minus one, to check the front face is Z plus one, to check the top face is Y plus one, to check the bottom face is Y minus one, check the left face, X minus one, and finally the right face is uh, X plus one. So now we have a, a way of knowing where to look. Now we need to have something to look for. Right now, we're just creating the mesh data and putting it straight in the mesh, but we're not doing anything else. So we have no way of knowing what the last voxel was, what the next voxel will be, what any given voxel in the chunk at any time is. Um, so we need a way of checking that. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to create, for now, just a bool array. Um, obviously, this will be more complicated later on. You need to know what kind of block it is, whether that block is transparent, what textures to use, that kind of thing. Right now, we're just going to have a simple on-off. Is the block solid or not? Uh, it's three-dimensional array because you've got your X, Y, Z. Uh, we'll call this voxel map, and we need to initialize it. And we initialize it with voxel data chunk, oh, chunk width for X, chunk height for Y, and finally, chunk width for Z. So that's going to be our bool array. We can look through that. Once we've assigned data to it, we can look through that and we can just say, is the given voxel true or false? If it's true, there is a voxel there, i.e. there is a block in that space. Um, and if it's not, then there's no block. It's just there. So we need to populate this array. So we'll create another function. Populate voxel map, we will call this. We don't need to pass any values into this. It's uh, specific to this chunk. And just for ease, we're just going to copy that. And then all we're going to do in here is um, set the uh, voxel map x, y, z. Uh, for now, we're just going to set them all to true. And it doesn't really matter for now. We're just we're just getting our head around the chunk and everything. So uh, later on, we'll obviously have to do something with this value. Otherwise, it's, we won't get our terrain. Uh, but for now, we'll just do that. So then up here, we're going to have to call that. And then also, we're going to move this as well. Just might as well keep everything nice and neat. We'll call this one create chunk mesh. Yeah, create chunk mesh. We'll just leave it at that. No, we won't just leave it at that. Create mesh data, we'll call it. I want to call that one up here. Okay, so now we need now that we have a way of looking at a particular voxel, we need to have a way a function to check it. So we'll come down to here. Doesn't really matter where you put it, but I'm putting it here. Uh, and we're going to create a bool function. So this will this function when called will return either true or false. Uh, we'll call it check voxel, and all this is going to do. Yeah, we need to give it a, a way of knowing which voxel it's got to check. Uh, and all it's going to do 
is it's going to um, look at the given position, the voxel that, repre that that position represents, and then return whether or not that voxel is true or false, whether or not there is a voxel there. Now, uh, vector 3's uh, three float values, and we need integers. So the first thing we need to do is just uh, create an xyz int. Um, I'm going to round it using math dot mathf dot floor to int. Now this is a little unnecessary. Uh, we need it to be an integer. Now we we could we could just do this, like we could just recast it, um, and that would give us an integer, which should be fine in the way we're going to code this because basically we're assigning the values to that that pos value that's being passed in which and we know that we're always putting it on a on a whole number on an integer so unity wouldn't have any problem rounding that to an int to the correct int anyway but just to be on the super safe side i'm going to use floor to int and what floor to int does is it always rounds it down to the nearest int rather than uh, rounds it down to an int rather than the nearest one so it even if it's 0 0.99 it's going to round it to 0 if it's 1.4 or 1.7 it's going to round it to 1 it always rounds down and because we're putting our blocks we're working from the bottom corner the bottom left back corner so the the lower value on all the axes is axes um then we always want to be rounding down. As soon as it crosses over to the next number up, then we've moved into the next voxel. So we're going to round um, using floor to int. And then we want to do the same to uh, y and z. And then because our array of voxels is actually just a bool array, we can just return voxel map x y z, and that will return a. Um, it would also help if you spelt floor correctly, and that will return a uh, a boolean value based on what we've put in here, which at the minute is all true. But that's we'll get to that later. So now, finally, the last thing we need to do to actually make this work is we need to use that function. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to put an if statement here. Now, we created our offset array, face checks array, in the same order as this, in the same order as this, which is what this uh, index value here corresponds to. So we can just steal that index for this as well. Um, and we're going to do our if not, that's what the exclamation point means, um, if not check voxel so only if it's false if it returns true what this is going to do is check the the offset volume the, the offset voxel so if it's the back face that we're about to draw it's going to check the voxel behind it if it returns true that means there's a voxel there if there's a voxel there we don't need to draw this face so skip over it if it returns false it means there's nothing there which case we want to draw this face so if not voxel check and then we want the position that we're currently drawing uh, this voxel at plus the voxel data dot face checks uh, and then we're going to pass in that index that we're using above the same index we're using for the UVs and for the triangles uh, and for the vertices sorry um, if it's not then do all this stuff and make sure you put all of your brackets in So we're only drawing the faces if there is no voxel against that face. Because it's cubes, it's nice and simple. We know it's voxel equals no face. There's no partial or anything like that. There's nothing complicated like with matching cubes or anything like that. Now, that should... You think might think that would be all there is to it. But if I go in here and run this now, we're going to get uh, an index out of range error. Yep. And the reason for that is because we're checking um, the adjacent voxels in this array, but if you think about it, if we're checking, say, uh, 0, 0, 0, then the voxel to the left of it is going to be minus 1, 0, 0. Now, there is no minus 1 in this array. This array starts at 0. And likewise, if we're at the other side of it and we're checking um, number 5, because that's the size we've currently got our world set at, our chunk set at, if we're checking number five and we check the voxel to the right, it's going to be checking number six. 
well there's no six either so we need to do a little check before we return the value just to make sure that we are in range of the chunk so we'll do this with a simple if statement if x is less than zero or x is greater than voxel data dot chunk width and now we need to have a we need to put a minus one on the end of here because if you think about it the arrays uh, don't simply work one two three four when you've got five items in an array that's four uh, in that's four indexes zero one two three four five items but the top the last index number is four because you start with zero so if we simply say if it's greater than and the number of items we're going to go past the actual in number of indexes so we need to put minus one starting at zero to the number of items minus one and then we need to do the same x if y is minus is less than zero or y is greater than voxel data chunk height or z less than zero or z greater than voxel data dot chunk width and then so if that's true we need to return something now we're going to return um false if that's true because basically this if this is true that means that the whatever voxel is trying to check is outside of the current chunk when we've got more chunks we're going to have to do some stuff to actually um make this uh like look at the other chunks see what's actually there right now we've only got one chunk so we don't need to worry about what's next door we're just going to treat it as though this is the only thing in existence because it is uh, and we're going to return false because if we don't return false if you think about it all of our voxels all of our chunk is, uh, voxel positions are set to true so it's all solid so it's not drawing any faces inside the chunk because or it's not going to draw any faces inside the chunk because all of the voxels are solid so they're all up against each other if we then also tell it to not draw voxels that are up against the outer edge then it's not going to draw anything so what this should do is this means that it will draw the outer skin of this completely solid chunk of course let's not forget them so then if we go into our program and press play there we go um, and if we check inside yes right so now it's only drawing the outside of the chunk and then um, just as a quick demonstration if I change this to 15 we should find we have a taller chunk yeah uh, and obviously we you start it starts to look a bit more like a game when you uh, put textures in which I think we'll, I think I'm gonna do in the next tutorial uh, and start to make it look a bit more like terrain so um, there is actually the, okay there's one other thing I'd like to fix fix so we um, we're doing all this for efficiency's sake um, I may have I think I explained in the last video that even despite the fact that we're doing all this to keep the memory usage and the CPU usage down there is one thing that we have to do which is we have to have four vertices for each corner for each face even though it means that for every corner of a cube there are three vertices that are sharing the exact same position and the reason we have to do that is because if this uh, if these uh, three faces here shared this one vertices here then this wouldn't be a corner it would be a sort of rounded smushed over thing um i think all 3d programs work this way but basically if you want to have a sharp crisp clean edge it has to have separate vertices if you have them all share it it rounds it over it does its best to kind of make it look smooth and we don't want that i mean you might want that in your game maybe that's the look you're going for but for this we're we're doing a minecraft type game and that means solid cubes with clean edges the one thing that i did when i was um trying to make everything simple and uh and not try and over complicate things is uh i um to reference these arrays here i use these values here but i'm also using these values to determine what vertices to add so for each Ver each index here this code adds the vertices to the uh, vertices list which is fine except if you look here we have duplicates so we're adding 0 3 1 and then we're adding 1 and 3 again 
what that means is that we have two vertices here that are completely superfluous. We need the triangle index, we need these two references, but we don't need the extra vertices added in because it means that we've got on each face we've got two extra vertices that were completely unneeded. So I just want to fix that. I'm going to do it in a slightly hacky way, but like I said, this tutorial is meant to be more about ease of understanding than particularly elegant or spectacular code. So if we just get rid of these two, uh, two vertices, the duplicates, if you notice all the way down it's always the same pattern. You have one vertices, another vertices, and then the third vertices, and then the next two are just these two reversed. And then in our UV, array, our UV arrays here, these are the same. This follows the same pattern. Remember, each one of these corresponds to a vertices, so we don't need these two. Again, same pattern. Uh, we need to change this to four. And that to four. Now, the way we're going to get around this uh, is we're going to do away with this for loop. So this for loop is looping for each of those triangles. Now we can we could do that for the vertices and we could do it for the UV arrays, but we can do it for the triangles because we need six triangles and we only have four um, four triangle indexes. So we need six triangle indexes, sorry, not triangles. So we'll get rid of this. And what we're going to do is we're just going to do it all manually. Like I said, this isn't the most elegant way. But that's the way we're going to do it. So what we're doing here is we're, we're adding a single vertices, uh, and instead of uh, we're still using this p reference. Just remember the uh, the p reference is what is referencing the face itself. You before we had a loop to give us this number, um, and it was just looping through each of these, and we were adding them in turn. Now we're not doing that. Now we're just going to give it the number manually directly by typing it in there. So it's simple for the vertices. Uh, and we can do the same thing for the UVs because that is also uh, straightforward. Oops. Now, where we need to do a little bit of finagling uh, is the triangles. So, to start with, triangles.add, and we're just going to add the vertex index, which is pretty much what we did before. We were looping through each one, and then at the end of the loop, uh, at the end of every iteration, we were incrementing vertex index. So, we can't do that this time, because we've got, we need six indexes, and we've only got four vertices, so we can't, it's not a one-to-one -one ratio anymore. So we need six of these. Let's just copy this, copy paste this. And if we go back into here, if you remember, the pattern was zero, one in terms of indexes. We had six of them before. It was zero, one, two, and then it looped back on itself, two, one, and then the last one. So that's what we need to do. Vertex index, vertex index plus one, plus two, then plus two, plus one, and plus three. And that gets us... That make, gets us six indexes out of these four numbers in the correct order. So, plus one, plus two, plus two, plus one, and finally plus three. And then at the end of all that, we need to increment our vertex index, but we're only incrementing it by four, not six, because they were only added four vertices. And as you can see, it's made absolutely no difference whatsoever, but, but there are two less vertices on each face now, which doesn't make much difference to what you were looking at right now, but when you've got, say, a hundred chunks on screen and each chunk's got maybe a few thousand pixels, uh, a few thousand voxels, more like a few, maybe a few hundred voxels that are actually being drawn, it can make quite a big difference. 
Um, and also, there is a limit to the amount of uh, vertices that you can have in a single mesh, which will also make a difference. Uh, but that is where I'm going to end this video. Hopefully in the next one we'll be able to make it look a little bit more like a Minecrafty type game. We'll get some textures in there. Uh, but for now, thanks for watching.